the fair winds blow Our home is where the waters flow We'll show you what we've come to know On board while sailing wisdom So while we've been here in Puerto Real, we've done a lot of errands. We went shopping because being in other countries makes it a little hard to get those things that you're really used to, like anything you find at West Marine. So we had a bit of a shopping list and we're in Puerto Rico, there's a West Marine. So we rented a car, drove to San Juan, which is like three hours away and got a bunch of stuff that we really needed. So because of COVID, we can't try clothes on in the store, but we can in the parking lot. They were like, how, you have to buy it and then try it on in the parking lot and then you can return it. Yeah, it's like, being that doesn't make any sense. Three hour it. drive. Yeah. <laughs> we're gonna try it on in the parking lot. So, COVID trying. Those are really loose. They're really loose. Yeah. So, put them on below. Or can we get video? Yeah, go ahead. Sure. Oh, thanks. Whoa. <laughs> Nah, they won't come out. Herbie's the dentist. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he can get, he can Give it to him. Today is a work day. Yeah, Herbie's we're... got the job of cleaning the cockpit. It's gross. <laughs> so I got all the cushions out and I like soaked it and scrubbed. And then the big part is the crap we have down in the footwell area. Literal crap. Literal, just so much poop, so much bird poop. Yes. And then a lot of just junk because it's kind of like the trunk in your car, the back seat, you're just like, oh, put it there, I'll get to it later. Well, now it's later, so we're getting to it. So <laughs> I'm cleaning all this, and then I'm gonna bring all the crap from in there onto the seats, clean down there, and then put all the crap back, and possibly throw out some crap that we don't need. And I have the exciting job of doing laundry. Tons and tons of laundry. So I had a thing to grow fish and veggies, which we've never used. I giant pipe which we used to use to store our stern anchor in before we had a good roller now we have a good roller don't need to carry this anymore another random piece of pipe don't even know why we have that <laughs> uh, this is our broken piece from our monitor it broke way back in portugal and i've been keeping it in case we needed it because it was a good piece of stainless steel really long bar we haven't needed it time to dump it bunch of random trash a glass jar an empty milk container, an anchor that does not hold in sand, and my hat that's dead. It's it's dead. Time to dump them. Or give them away. We're giving this to our neighbor because it is a good anchor, just not in sand. It doesn't look like we've done much, but we've done a lot today. We really need to go provisioning. So things we think about when we provision, meats, veggies, fruits, all your basics, but also some canned foods and some stuff to eat if we get caught in a blow and don't feel like cooking so much. So SpaghettiOs, things like that. So pretty much on a long passage, fresh fruits and veggies and stuff like that last your first seven days if you're lucky. Like it's more like three to four. After that, your stuff that's frozen and stuff that's canned. So being how this is a 10 day passage, hopefully less, we're planning for more than that. So. Lots of fresh stuff for the beginning and then more cheese towards the end. Okay, it's time to go up. So I got my bosun chair and I got it set up to a pulley system to three lay nylon rope. And I got my ascenders so I don't get so much rope burning, like tear up my hands. Cause we're going sailing tomorrow. So I'd like to be a little nicer to my hands. So I'm gonna go up, gonna check everything, do a full masthead inspection and then work my way all the way down check it all out and then if everything's good we leave tomorrow all looks good all right just got down from the top and everything is a-okay -okay, which is really nice to know because this rigging is now six years old and the last time i calculated in the vi was 15,000 miles no suriname so 
we've been another 1200 ish so it's it's up there in mileage so if this were steel we'd be halfway through our second rig so it's nice to know that it's uh still holding strong so our rule bilge pump has worked for nine years not the same pump i've had to replace the pump many times because it dies because it gets hair in it and then it burns up the motor someone told me about this guy the gulper which is the electric version of the gusher where it'll just flow anything all sorts of crap just right through the pipe so i'm gonna put this guy in and then hopefully this will be the last time i have to change the shower sump pump it's a really nasty job like think about it you don't know the pump's dead until it doesn't pump anymore and then it fills up i hate it a question that i'm frequently asked about the construction of the wood in the head or the treatment of the wood in the head is did i forget to oil the back side because in the video when i build the head now this is back like 2018 so three years ago now i oil and varnish this face of the wood not the back so i chose woods that do not rot or that are extremely highly rot resistant so this wood is japanese cedar in portugal they call it cryptomeria and it's like famous for not rotting star fruit the the sh weird fruit that's like the star shape this is wood from that so it's a tropical hardwood i did nothing it's the bare wood in here and this is what everything screws onto so we have one stud uh, or one cleat made out of that over here and then another one here that has like absolutely no oil at all on it it's completely untreated and it's fine once you choose good woods then everything just follows from there and you don't really have to stress about the little details so now we're going to mount the pump to the back side of this really really thick board and that'll help flush the water so the whale pump it's a diaphragm pump, so it doesn't go underwater like your rule regular manual build, bilge pump. But this guy gets mounted up nice and high and dry. I just have to run wires to a totally new location. And then we're going to just put this in line with this hose. This is the discharge hose to the shower. And we have a seacock on it, even though this is really, really, really high up. So the chances that this ever goes underwater are really low. I mean, our rub rail is here, so it's like really high up but just in case if we had an issue like just whatever i can always shut that seacock and close the boat up but otherwise we can run the pump even when we're healed over it's always above water okay i got the pump installed it is mounted to the back of this board and then it runs up and dumps out and all that's all that's the same but the best part the sound the old pump sounds like a bilge pump and i was like and really loud especially when it got hair in the impeller this sounds like a stomach pump all right so that dumps water the cool thing i kept the old rural pump so it's acting as a check valve down there and a strong box and then this sucker has a check valve again so now we got two check valves all thankfully in the same direction so water gets dumped out can't come back in and this is what the water looks like when you discover that the bilge pump doesn't work anymore and you either stick your fingers down there or find some other way to fix it now it is slow i mean this thing is doing 220 gallons per hour our emergency our high water bilge pump is a thousand gallons per hour 1100 and then our main bilge pump is like 500 gallons per hour so not a huge competitor stick around to see if it holds up which i really hope it does because it was expensive it was like close to 300 dollars. it's our last night in puerto rico we just came back from a fabulous meal at club nautico uh called at toro molte and had some delicious authentic puerto rican food <laughs> Now, I'm going to do something that I should have done every single time that we've gone on a long passage. And that is to put the patch on the night before we leave. So I can get all my drowsiness and weirdness out of the way. And then tomorrow, I can completely enjoy myself. Well, we can't leave quite yet because uh, there's a cat on our boat. Hi, Charlie. Yeah. Are you ready to go sailing? 
Yeah. On goes the harness. Your favorite. You love the harness. There you go. Yep. Ready to go sailing. Whee. Well, we are leaving Puerto Rico, making a straight shot for Miami. And unlike all the questions were asked by everyone, oh, you're going to the Dominican Republic, and then Cuba, and then Turks and Caicos, and the Bahamas, and all. It's like, no. Straight shot, 1,000 miles, direct to Miami. Non-stop flight by boat. This is our last really long sail for a while. And I'm pretty excited for it because it's going to be all downwind through the trades and up the Gulf Stream. So we should go pretty darn fast. This is an especially surreal trip for us because we left Florida in June of 2018. And now we're heading back in, what month are we in? I don't even know. <laughs> what month are we in? March, March of 2021. So this is our round trip. This is a big deal. It's really, really special to be completing the circle with this thousand mile passage. It's gonna be so crazy coming back to Florida. I don't even know how to describe how I'm feeling right now. Antsy to get there, excited for the trip ahead. A little bit sad, but we've still got a lot of adventures in store in our future. Yeah, Charlie. Okay, here's Charlie's leash. Okay, so wind's blowing us off the everything. We're just gonna untie the stern first, pull in its line, that way clear the prop and the spring line, and then we will Drift out into the middle and then back out again and not hit anything. Okay. That is the plan. That sounds solid. Yeah. So we Charlie waited. has uncovered the ah, good. She's uh, uncovered the compass. compass for us. Yes, good. Thanks, Charlie. Thank you. <laughs> they keep it covered for the bird poop. <laughs> bird poop. So, I'll man the helm. You I get the lines. lines. Okay. Okay. Yep. Okay. So, uh, just a little bit of rest yeah I'm going to tend to these once we're underway okay it was just time consuming and I wanted to not do that last night that's fine okay. <laughs> yeah Charlie girl Luckily the waves aren't huge, but we do have a lot of white caps out here. I'm super excited. We have some clouds right back there that are going to be giving us wind, pushing us out of the south. It's, this is wonderful. Yesterday sucked. Thanks for watching this episode of Sailing Wisdom. Don't forget to like the video, share it with your friends, and hit subscribe so you don't miss the next Rigging Doctor episode. And if you're interested in even more Ringing Doctor awesomeness, consider becoming a patron to see all of our extras. Can't wait to see you next time as you join us out here on the high seas.